The International Criminal Court said Friday it had ended proceedings against Vincent Oti, the former deputy head of the notorious Uganda Rhodes Resistance Army, LRA, as it believed he had died. Oti was facing 32 charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity, including murder, rape, forced enlistment of children, cruel treatment, and pillaging. The Zatars from the LRA said as early as 2007 that LRA leader Joseph Kony had executed Oti, who had been instrumental in peace talks. The court said it agreed with prosecutors that all available evidence indicated that Mr. Oti was killed in a remote area of the Democratic Republic of Congo in October 2007. ICC prosecutor Kalim Khan said last year he wanted to revive a case against Kony, a fugitive who is also accused of more than 30 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Kony led the LRA as it terrorized Ugandans for nearly 20 years and battled the government of President Yoweri Museveni from bases in northern Uganda and neighboring countries in recent years. It has largely been wiped out. Start with our top story. Today, Israel's national security advisor says the country's war cabinet has agreed to allow two tanker trucks of fuel to enter the Gaza Strip each day, a quantity he described as very minimal. The fuel would go to Gaza's communication system and water and sewage services. Israel has barred entry to fuel since the start of the war last month, saying Hamas militants could divert it for military use. It has also barred food, water and other supplies except for a trickle of aid from Egypt that aid workers say falls short of what's needed. The UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees says it was unable to bring in its aid convoy today. Meanwhile, Israeli troops continue to search Gaza's biggest hospital, Al-Shifa, for traces of a Hamas command center the military alleges was located under the building. They have shown what they said were a tunnel entrance and weapons found inside the compound, but not yet any evidence of the command center which Hamas and hospital staff deny existed. The Israeli Defense Forces also say they have found the bodies of two women Hamas fighters took hostage when they attacked Israel. The attack killed more than 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and fighters took about 240 people hostage. The Gaza Health Ministry has said at least 11,000 residents of the territory have died in the Israeli operation. A few hours ago, I spoke with reporter Linda Gratstein in Jerusalem for the latest on the conflict. Israel today said that it would allow two fuel trucks a day into Gaza. It's the first time that Israel has agreed to allow fuel in on a regular basis. And that decision was slammed by some of the more right-wing partners in the government who said that Israel should not be allowing any fuel in until the hostages were freed. The, the situation in Gaza is growing increasingly desperate where hundreds of thousands of people are sheltering in these UN facilities and uh, there's not enough food, uh, not enough uh, any services. And the UN had basically said they would shut down all their operations because they didn't have the fuel. So now maybe it will allow them to give at least some aid to people. Israel cut the telecommunications in Gaza on Wednesday, and they apparently went out again today, although it may just be a lack of fuel as well. Uh, the United Arab Emirates said it would build three desalination plants in Gaza, uh, which is also good news because even before the war started, humanitarian groups were saying that 95 percent of the water in Gaza was not drinkable. And so they're afraid more now of the spread of disease and other things. And Linda, 
Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his country's forces have uh, discovered a command center on the Al Shifa hospital in the Gaza Strip along with bombs and weapons and Israel has faced criticism from leaders in the Middle East and even in the West for the raid on the Al Shifa hospital. Could you update us on the situation there? Yes, yeah, so uh, Israel has uh, surrounded the Shifa hospital it has gone uh, sort of room to room. There was video of smoky rooms and patients being moved from one room to another. Uh, and Israel said that it actually believed that at one point the hostages were being held in Shifa Hospital. They've recovered the bodies of two female hostages, one a young soldier and one a 65-year-old uh, woman, not actually in the hospital, but near the hospital. They say they discovered duffel bags with guns and other things behind the MRI machine. That said, so far, the proof that Israel has offered that there was actually a command and control center of Hamas below Shifa, which is something that Israel has been saying for years and Hamas and the hospital officials have been denying for years, the proof doesn't seem to be that definitive. And in the southern city of uh, Kahan Yunis, People reported that Israel had dropped leaflets telling them to flee to known shelters. So that's raising concerns. The military may expand its battle against Hamas. Yes, Khan Yunus is in the south of Gaza, which is actually where Israel has been for weeks telling people to flee to and that they would be safe if they moved to the south. Uh, Israel has dropped the leaflets the same way that they did a few weeks ago when the ground invasion first began that they did in northern Gaza. Um, it's not clear, first of all, where people in Khan Yunus would flee to. Um, you know, there, there's not really anywhere to go. People can't leave Gaza. Um, that said, they've dropped leaflets. They have not yet uh, begun a ground invasion into the southern part of Gaza. Israel insists that its only goals are to uh, end Hamas's military power in Gaza and to free the some 240 hostages. And U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken uh, yesterday actually discussed clashes between Palestinians and Israeli settlers in the West Bank. So, you know, there are about 500,000 Jewish settlers living in the West Bank among uh, close to 3 million Palestinians. 